This is Frank Tomasello of the Institutes, welcoming you back for our next session on a topic important to all of us in the business world, the customer experience. Our affiliate, the International Insurance Society, has coordinated today's discussion and assembled an incredibly impressive speaker panel featuring some of the most forward thinkers on the topic. The session, Customer Experience, Leveraging Data for Success, will explore the evolution of data-driven strategies and their impact on customer service. Now to our panelists. Welcome to today's panel discussion, which will focus on leveraging data for a successful customer experience as part of the Institute's Future of Risk Conference. We're very happy to have a terrific panel with us today that have uh, many decades of experience in insurance and technology and data management. Uh, let me introduce you to that panel. Uh, Bijan Khazrashahi, uh, President of Fairfax International. Uh, Edward Levin, uh, Global Head of Accident and Health at uh, AIG. Harish Nilamana, uh, Co-Founder of Conver, and uh, Rob Shimmick, Group Chief uh, Executive Officer of, of Voltec. Uh, what I'd like to do to start to, to, to start the discussion is to provide some context uh, to our uh, panel today uh, and uh, set the stage for our questions. So uh, customer experience is uh, one of those all-inclusive terms that encompasses the elements of <clears throat> relationships among businesses, distribution partners, and the ultimate consumer. Uh, within the world of insurance, customer acquisition and delivery mechanisms have generally been uh, direct to consumer or through intermediaries. Now, in the age of digitization, data mining, data lakes, artificial intelligence, and segmentation, the new self-service element of customer experience has been added to the mix. Businesses, governments, and consumers had to rapidly adapt to a different form of process and engagement uh, due to the COVID-19 pandemic, the need to radically uh, reform client engagement, fostered creativity and entrepreneurship in adapting to the new rules of engagement. The integration of data and technology that has been evolving over the years has become more prominent during the pandemic, and if anything, has accelerated that, that development. The amalgamation of uh, first and third party data in the development of products, processes, and algorithms has become uh, more common in the age of digitization. AI patent filings have dramatically increased as companies look to reduce the expense component of their products and services while optimizing the customer experience by gaining more uh, insight into customer needs. The number of IoT devices in play across consumer, commercial, Industrial segments has experienced explosive growth. There are estimates of over 30 billion devices in use uh, in 2020, uh, with varied estimates uh, for 2025, uh, ranging up to 75 billion uh, devices in use. These devices are producing a flood of data that is being used in improving product, customer experience, as well as uh, profit margins. Our panel discussion will cover a wide range of issues related to the customer experience and leveraging data, ranging from product design to process management. As an all-encompassing term, customer experience goes far beyond what is commonly regarded as customer service, which has typically been focused on operational components of the transaction. Customer experience touches upon all elements of contact with distribution partners and the ultimate buyer that cover the entire journey, including product selection, application quoting, binding, claims payments, change management, upsell, cross-sell, and renewal processing. And our panel will focus upon the interaction of data and technology on the uh, customer uh, experience. So with that, I'd like to move into our first uh, component of the um, discussion, which is data and technology as components of differentiation. And we've seen the insurance industry has historically relied upon product differentiation. This resulted in initial breakthroughs followed by an abundance of Me Too filings. 
the advent of the digital and short tech data managed area era in the industry has turned the concept of differentiation on its head. In addition, the historical information conduits between insurance companies, their distribution partners and customers have changed dramatically. So with that, I'd like to toss up the first question to uh, Rob Schimmick. The question being, how has the emergence of new technology and data capabilities changed the way you see the insurance industry today and into the future? Rob? First, Rob, thanks for having me today. And a real pleasure for myself to get an opportunity to participate with a great group of panelists. Um, you know, I, I first thing I'll say is that it's really the emergence of this new technology and data capabilities that are the foundation of the Bolt Tech organization that I lead. But before commenting at all about that, let me just provide a little bit of context. I, I think the way I would say it is in our for sure, our interconnected and digital lifestyles are simply just changing the world as we know it today. You know, look, as a result, um, customer expectations of businesses are simply at an all-time high, I mean, particularly against the backdrop of the global pandemic, where digital access to products and services that simply table stakes for businesses today. Um, as we all know on this panel, it's very clear that the insurance industry has struggled with the context of how to do digital transformation. And now more than ever, the industry's got to tackle the legacy challenges across the entire value chain for the industry. So for customers, I think they really just don't find it that easy to buy insurance. It's complicated. It's highly inconvenient to access. So fundamentally, I would say insurer, uh, customers can't buy insurance so well at the point of need. Now for insurance carriers, um, the, the current system is just inefficient. No matter how you look at it, where 30 or 40% of premiums go toward SG&A and overhead. And you know, I think to some extent it's not really getting better. And for distributors, whether it's a traditional distributor or a non-traditional distributor, it's just difficult to access insurance products that are gonna provide customers with more value. And so the whole backdrop of technology becomes very important. Like the banking industry, there's just an opportunity here to address some of the challenges that we're facing with machine learning or artificial intelligence, big data, biometrics, blockchain, all of the game-changing technologies that we have at our disposal. Now, the tools are changing the way we see the insurance industry today, um, but, but of course, into the future. And that's the risk and it's the opportunity. Um, now, one of the challenges is that there are technology companies that have many of these tools. And then you have the insurers that understand the risk and own the bulk of these customer relationships in the first place. But I don't think either one of those two parties is going to solve this problem alone. And so... Uh, our view is that the winners in this race are going to be born out of partnerships. It's going to be a team sport. The power of many is going to change the landscape forever. And so the Boltec organization that I lead was born out of a desire to harness capabilities that span the entire spectrum of insurance distribution, where we're connecting supply with demand with technology. And simply speaking, what we're trying to do is transform the way that insurance is bought and the way that it's sold. So we're a digital native. We believe that the future of insurance is designed around people's lives. What we're trying to do is make things easier for customers, and we want to multiply the opportunities for our insurance partners. And when we work with partners, whether they're insurance carriers, banks, high street retailers, e-wallets, e-commerce players, it doesn't matter who they are, we help by serving as a gateway for customers and partners to access insurance more easily and more efficient through the latest technology-enabled um, the insurance exchange in the world. So today, um, with over $5 billion of premium flowing through the Bolt Tech platform, I think we've kind of proved the idea that you can use technology and you can use data to begin the process at that scale, transforming this industry. So our insurance exchange, as we call it, allow us to work with partners and embed insurance seamlessly into the customer journey. So just two quick examples. Um, we lead, for example, with telcos in Europe and in countries like Italy and Austria and Ireland, we embed device protection into the existing phone sales at the time 
that a telco is selling the phones or meeting the customer need at the exact point of purchase and adding revenue to our partner's bottom line. We work with this super, uh, the super app line in Southeast Asia. And what we do there is provide digital brokerage capability that's integrated into their interface. So what they're able to do is offer a suite of insurance carrier choices for their customers, complementing all of their other services, whether it's banking or rideshare or food delivery, making the app even more integral to the user's daily lives. So from our perspective in the new world, um, technology that allows us to just add insurance at the moment that a customer needs it, that's the future. And that's what I think is starting to happen to the customer experience. Thank you, Rob. Arish, would you like to add a, a touch on Yeah, that? no, I think uh, in, in, in general, I think Rob's themes around the digitization, right? So essentially you see in the broader market, right? Not just insurance, digitization is, is essentially driving change in operating models, right? So from where I sit at Conver, I see two themes, right? So one is what I'd say digitization of the process, right? Digitization of the operating model. Um, this could be transitioning from paper-based interactions to more digitized interactions across the value chain, right? Um, so that's one, <clears throat> one thing that I see. The second thing that I see is that um, the simplification of the engagement itself, right? So this goes towards um, some of the themes that Rob mentioned, right? Uh, offering insurance at the point it's needed, um, offering insurance in a way that is less cumbersome and easier to do business with an insurance company. Um, so you see data and analytics being applied to uh, both those things, right? So we have customers who use uh, data and data science simply behind the scenes that alters how customers perceive the product, right? So what happens behind the scenes in terms of how mid and large uh, commercial businesses get interacted is there's a lot of paperwork that gets exchanged between the insured, you know, the intermediaries and the underwriting teams, right? Uh, the simple act of obtaining a quote could take hours and weeks. And the digitization of that, that value chain transforms the experience, right? So you go from uh, an expectation of weeks to get a quote back to near real-time engagement with the customer. So, so operating model changes on the back end transform how customers perceive or receive the product. So we see that, we enable that as a component of how we do business. The second piece of it is how do customers or ultimately the end insurers interact with the product, right? So simple mainstream uh, business or owner package, for example, if a restaurant owner needs a policy today, you know, it it is a product that, as Rob was saying, is a little bit of comp. It, there's a little bit of complexity to it. There's a, uh, a bit of obfuscation of like, what do they actually need? Uh, that happens. What we see with data and analytics is that's analytics is that's transforming, right? Um, and I keep using data and analytics uh, because there is a mountain of data explosion of data out there. IoT devices, all of that happens. Um, in some sense, sometimes that data actually makes it problematic to simplify the experience. So without the analytical techniques and the layers that you add on top of the data, it could be a bad sort of situation for consumers as well. So with data and analytics, sometimes you can transform that product itself, right? So as a restaurant owner, you come uh, to expect working with an agent, you know, a series of questions being asked of you. Uh, that you may or may not understand its relevance towards ensuring a business, but you're moving towards the direction where a restaurant owner want, understands why they need insurance. Data and analytics is being used to describe that need, right? So this is what peers in your business are trying to do with this insurance. This is why you need this protection. Uh, this is financial risk transfer for you. So that, that's one area where analytics can serve. The second area, once there is a strong understanding of that, the consumer is then guided towards uh, a, a more sort of very digitized experience in terms of how they can, you know, go ahead and obtain a quote or get coverage, right? So that's that's another way to think about it. Uh, another substantial way that insurance is changing is that Rob talked about how 
you know, insurance is actually being offered just in time. Again, how do you then enable that? You enable that because you understand the consumer at a very granular level of detail. So at the point they need the protection, you understand enough about the consumer, enough about the insured to be able to accurately, you know, offer a quote or settle a claim, right? So those are the kind of things that are happening on the back end in terms of like those two themes. So one is uh, what I'd say, digitization of the value chain using data and analytics, right? So operational efficiencies are for sure there, but there's a transformation of the customer experience. You go from weeks and days to interact to near real time experiences. And then what I'd call data and analytics driven sort of simplification of the engagement model and, and product development, right? So those are the two things that we enable our customers on. Um, I think that is bound to change the industry as a whole, uh, including the incumbents are bound to have to listen and change the way they do those things. Uh, but that's my perception, wrap on these topics. Well, thank you, Harish. Ed or Bijan? Hello, uh, everyone. And again, uh, echoing what Rob said, thank you very much for having us on this panel. Um, I'm very much honored to be here and um, very much looking forward, obviously, to our discussions already is moving in a, in a very interesting direction. Um, I do agree with all the comments that is, that, that is made. A couple points to add here. So the area that I look at is international. So we're looking at many companies around the world, not just North America or more developed uh, markets. And the idea of customer experience, how do we define it? And the idea how technology plays, it is very different in different countries, depending upon where they are. Um, the uh, use of technology should make it easier for customer to be able to access insurance products, but a bit more than that, uh, it should increase their knowledge about learning how they can do risk transfer. In many cases, either be commercial or consumer or SME, uh, they may not have the right knowledge in terms of what can actually be used as insurance to do the risk transfer. Um, in the technology side, in our industries around the world, we have to spend a lot of time and effort in automating processes. The idea of using technology with customers, although we say we are doing it, but I think it's still at the very, very early stages. In most cases, we use technology to develop products, then we try to use technology under the customer experience to a way, and I'm exaggerating a little bit, but to push the product for the consumers to, to buy, create the need. Um, if you use the technology properly, we can actually do predictive uh, analysis whereby we anticipate what are the risks that the customers may have. In order to do that, the interaction with the customer need to change. We don't do a very good job in terms of our industry or around the world when it comes to that. Um, our intermediaries play a big role in this, but uh, as Rob was mentioning, it is a, a um, ecosystem between technology, insurance companies, intermediaries. All we have to work together. For insurance company to develop the technology on our own, uh, there are others that they do it much better. Uh, for us to get involved in the intermediary process, uh, direct to the customer, customer or using internet, whatever, we have tried, but there are others that they do much better job in that. So the point I'm trying to make is that when it comes to technology, customer experience, uh, and customer defined, however you want to define it, the customer could be our intermediaries, could be our brokers or agents at some point when we're using technology, could be ultimate, ultimate customer. I think it relies on us truly understanding the needs, understanding what is required, and then trying to provide a product that meets that. That doesn't go away. It's just that the te technology becomes an enabler to make the process much smoother. So uh, many times when we do this in many of the countries that I'm involved in, we get it wrong. We use high-end technology for whatever that means for that country. We develop a product, then we try to push it to the customer. Uh, consumer products always have focus groups and analysis and data and everything else before they introduce a, whatever it is, a shampoo or something. In our industry, we don't do that. We basically sit in a room, define the product, and we focus so much on the fact that underwriting-wise, we don't want to lose. And again, to Rob's point, the cost, the, the, the expense component of a combined ratio, what it costs our industry to actually produce that product is too high. So uh, when you put all these elements together, I think the emergence of using, in a way, the right technology 
uh, but also starting with really understanding what is the need that we are satisfying that the customer needs. That's where I think with advent of all the stuff that we have available, data, third-party data, our own data within our companies, understanding of the customers, that really, really comes to play. Generally speaking, I think uh, this is a big task. I think our industry as a whole has not done a very good job. I think we're taking baby steps in a, in, in a sense. And the danger for us is that if we don't get this right, there are others who are going to step into this sector very quickly because they're going to have access to the customer. They're going to have access to the data. They're going to have a pooling uh, capability of looking at many risks and trying to do it in a kind of a, a actuarial basis in terms of what the risk is, what the price is, and so on and so forth. Uh, so I, I do agree with all the comments, and I think we are at the cusp of really doing something that provides incredible value to customers. And that customer could be uh, corporate customers, could be SMEs, could be consumers. In these discussions, we think a too much about uh, consumers, like individual cu customer. But I think this applies to all uh, levels where we need to create value by using technology and use that not for process, but also for product development as well as delivery. Thank you, Bijan. Uh, anything to add on that? Yeah, just just one thought I had. I mean, we're we're talking about how to use technology and data and analytics too to make specific changes in process, et cetera. And the technology enables all of that, which is really cool. But I think if you step back, the other thing I see different about insurance is more of a cultural thing. And it's almost like the insurance industry, and this gets to what Bijan was saying is learning how to focus on customers and also learning how to develop product. You know, one of the interesting things I see is in the technology industry, what we've really adopted isn't just hardware and software. We've adopted this approach and not everyone at the same time, but the insurance industry is starting to adopt this approach where you look first at customer needs. And we start even to adopt vocabulary that they use in technology. You know, what's the use case? Well, what does that really mean? It's what's the customer going to do with this thing? What's the customer trying to accomplish? And we start thinking about things like minimum viable products. So what's the first version of the thing we're going to introduce? If you look at insurance over the last, let, let's just say the last 25 years since I've been in insurance. Ralph, you said there was a lot of innovation. I'd say there's been next to none. There's been some really good stuff on better pricing segmentation, say on US auto products. There's been the occasional breakthrough where people use telematics to change a little bit the way the product works and the way we price it, but basically not very much. And I think that's because the industry grew up trying to do a couple things. One, building vi big vertical stacks of technology that could just deliver one product in a very inflexible way, and also to get through regulatory hurdles. And so you couldn't focus too much on customers because you were so focused on those technology and regulatory challenges. And what we're learning is actually what we really need to use is flexible enabling technology that then lets us take you know, a more measured approach. We're gonna introduce a version, we're gonna change it, we're gonna improve it. And there is gonna be this cycle of not one-time product development, but ongoing product development. And you wind up with better priced, better tailored, more effective product for the consumer. And that's as much cultural, I think, as it is re really related to the technology itself. Thank you, thank you, Ed. Um... Second uh, question uh, I'd like to put forward to Harish is how's your company leverage data to provide uh, companies, distribution partners, and the ultimate customer with better products and service? And this maybe touches a little bit on what Ed <clears throat> just pointed out about innovation. So wh what, what are companies doing with the data capabilities that Conver uh, offers up to them? Yeah, no, thanks, uh, Ralph. I think it, it's probably extending a little bit of the discussion we just had, right? And, and just maybe I'll surface a couple of themes. There are a lot of things that are happening, but I'll surface a couple of themes that specifically that Converse involved in, right? So uh, one is this notion of digital experience, right? So uh, customers have somehow gotten 
uh, use and COVID, COVID has accelerated this idea that, you know, you, you should expect a level of uh, self-service from insurance companies as well, right? Um, a level of uh, experience where th that, you know, uh, some things that Bijan said as well, right? Like the operating models are not ready for it yet because historically, you know, had touched upon it, these are stacks that are built specifically to address regulatory needs and pricing requirements of certain standardized offerings that go to the market. These were in like, you know, if you think of it as I built this built for, built for purpose, people process technology stack that can do this one thing. It can do this one thing really well. It's been doing that one thing really well for many, many years. Right. Um, no complaints there, but then comes along Grubhub and delivery services and, um, you know, just in time requirement, businesses have changed. That's what Bijan is saying, right? Like, uh, that stack doesn't address the business need. Uh, you know, consumers have focus groups, C CPG has focus groups, but insurance companies, uh, I've worked for several large insurance companies over the, not, you know, none of, not as much as, as all of the rest of the esteemed panel here, but I think maybe in the last couple of years, maybe there was one focus group put together, right? where we sat in the room and asked business owners some questions about what their needs and if they understood you know, what they are going after. But since that, that isn't a thing in the DNA of an insurance company, the stack has never evolved. But the world around them evolved, right? And to the point where they ex consumers, business owners, everybody expects that in everything they do on a day-to-day -day basis because that's their life. So this idea of digital experience is something that data and analytics can help. We play a small role in that, in the sense that as insurance companies evolve that stack, um, we can add pieces of that stack that would enable that, right? So if you want to go to direct to consumer, or if you want to offer near real-time quoting experience or um, things like that, uh, we have an en enablement uh, stack that says, hey, you don't have the time to go build this out, right? Uh, we can come in um, and, and help you achieve that, right? So whether that be with Rob, you know, who's trying to enable maybe insurance company in the distribution play, uh, we can come along and say that can be more digitized with data and analytics, right? So that's, that's one, one core capability that we go after. Um, and it's not, and, and as, as Bijan would say, it's not just SMB or Main Street consumers, mid and large customers, expect this too. Uh, you could have a, a, a global exposure base and you would come to an insurance company and expect a level of understanding and digital experience from the chief risk officer that they never thought about before, right? And they're asking you to do this. Um, so that's where we can help. Um, the second piece of it is, and I, I think it was Bijan who touched upon this, uh, where we see a lot of activity. This is unanticipated, so I can't claim credit for any of this. <laughs> um, so, it so happens in building our widget and, and the, the data lake and the infrastructure around it, we have a lot of data about businesses, right? And so this is sort of the virtue of building this thing that we have. Um, customer transparency, right? The data is being used to explain to intermediaries, agents and broker partners, and as well as end customers. Uh, one, what is insurance? Like, you know, why, what does it do for you? Why do you need it? What are the types of insurance that you should be thinking about? So this is even stepping one step further before even the financial risk, the concept of financial risk transfer kicks in. I mean, all of us can sit here and talk about financial risk transfer and nobody on this planet will understand those three words uh, other than this panel here, right? So, uh, so, so just educating business owners, the idea that what protection offers you is your ability to continue as a viable entity in the event of these adverse things, right? So it doesn't drain your checking account. It doesn't drain your savings. You can continue to operate past a COVID, past something like that. Um, and this is what an insurance company can do for you. And how it can do it through coverage options. And these are the types of options. Um, and how does, so then it comes to the question, okay, I get what insurance is for. How, how should I think about the cost of doing this, right? Uh, so historically, there has been some 
pricing model sitting somewhere in an insurance company that sometimes even an underwriter may not understand uh, that spits out a number. And this number goes to an agent then goes to the insurer. And everybody looks at it and says, okay, this sounds right. <laughs> and, 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 and on begins the process. Renewal comes, you say, I need eight points of rate and it goes on. So the question is, how does the, as an insurance company, and there are very few people who understand that an insurance company does not like to have claims. They would like to help insureds actually protect themselves better and avoid claims as much as possible, both in terms of economic and societal interest, right? Like that's actually insurance companies want to do that. How do you help an insured, you know, risk management? So that making that data available, not just for analytics and underwriting purposes and claims adjudication, making that available to the business owner. And I keep using business owner because that's just the bias that I have. That's where I can attempt to uh, productize. Uh, making that available to the business owner and saying, hey, look, this is what is driving your property risk, right? The fact that you have these conditions uh, is, is what's driving that risk. Here's that data that we use to underwrite their risk. So do you understand that? Now, if you mitig create some mitigations around it, that's going to improve your risk profile and hence going to reduce your cost of insurance. Um, making that data available is a surprising sort of, maybe it's intuitive for all of you, but it was a surprising sort of side effect of, of, of having this data run us. So insurance companies are naturally sort of progressing towards risk management services, using that to help uh, insurers big and small, right? Um, so that's sort of idea. So anyway, I'll, I'll kind of turn it over to Ralph. And so those are the two themes I'd pick on, right? So digital experience and customer transparency. Yeah, well, th thank you for that. And you, you really segued into what was going to be the, the first question of our next segment, which was uh, the integration of first and third party data into the customer experience and how that benefits the customer experience. So what I'd like to do is uh, ask uh, uh, Ed, uh, in the sense of uh, uh, how, how he sees it for his business. How, how does this merger of third party and first party data uh, impact the way you manage your business or the way you look at customers? Yeah, well, I guess, I, I mean, I'll break it up very broadly into product and distribution. Um, so if we're thinking about the customer um, on, I'll call it the, the distribution side, one of the questions is how, I think Rob put it, how accessible is the product? How easy is it to find it? How easy is it to understand it? How easy is it to buy it? Um, and a lot of the time, particularly in more complex products, the whole process is pretty difficult. You know, if you're a small business owner, you may have to answer 50 underwriting questions. And each company will offer, offer a different set, different question set. So it's not just 50. It's 50 from this company and a different 50 from another with some overlaps. Um, if you're trying to buy car insurance, if you're trying to buy health insurance, again, there's a lot of questions. There's an involved process that's sometimes iterative. If you have more available data, either third or first party, you can start to fill in some of the answers to those questions before the applicant even really has to bother mm -hmm. with it. So, so you really take a huge amount of time and effort out of the process for the consumer by either eliminating questions or simplifying the answers to the questions. So on the distribution side, there's this huge improvement in speed and convenience and probably understanding too. Then you think about it on the product side. Well, what can we do? Well, a, a huge piece of it, and it's, I mean, I'm a cliche on this, but it's granularity. So the more data you have, the more granular you can be in your pricing. So in my world, accident and health, it used to be white collar versus blue collar, perhaps. Then it becomes age banded. So it's older, young, white collar, blue collar. Then maybe it becomes, where do you actually live? Where do you actually work? How much do you commute? And as more and more data becomes available, you can price more and more accurately. You can price the risk of having an accident. You can price the risk of um, being afflicted with cancer or whatever it is. So your pricing becomes more accurate, which again is a huge boon to the consumer. There's no cross subsidization. And the truth is some consumers will lose. The person who should have been paying more and wasn't 
may lose. They'll have to pay more. But the system overall is going to be more efficient. Without the subsidy, there will be less margin built in, um, call it reserve margin. So you can be more accurate in your pricing. You can be more targeted in what you offer. And, and of course, you can make the actual buying process so much more easier, so much more easy and, and, and accessible to people. So I think those are a few of the big things that better data brings to you. And, and my, my last point is, it doesn't always have to be digitized. I mean, insurance companies can use data better without new technology too. I mean, in some cases, you need something like Convert to do it, but in other cases, you could just do sampling and get more granular mm -hmm. and understand better. Or even in-house data. Look like, yeah. So, I mean, there are all kinds of answers. Data solves so many problems in the business. Yeah. And I think the one thing that on the product side, I don't know if you see this, is that uh, as as data gets available, you also see a product innovation where it's more a continual understanding of the customer versus a yes. renewal-based experience, right? So um, th that I think is an, another change that we should probably think about, right? We think of an experience with the customer as six months or 12 months, right? Like I talked to you today and I'll talk to you in 12 months or six months and I'll... Uh, I think you see a trend where folks think of it as an experience over the entirety of that journey, right? Um, so that's another sort of data-driven artifact. Yeah, I, I agree. And what what if you could use technology, you know, something that Rob offers with Boltec, so that as a customer's policy life went on and as his mm -hmm. life went on, you could change the product yes. and you could change it easily. You could use a slide bar and just say, I don't need as much coverage for this. I'm no longer worried about that, but yep. I am worried about something else. I mean, the, what a different world that would be for the customer, for sure. Yeah. Yep. You might not recognize that world anymore, Ed, but <laughs> I think you're 100% right. You know, this, the, uh, I'll just uh, very briefly give a couple of examples of some of the things we're doing with third-party data today complementing what we do that just are examples of this, but just from a customer perspective, so from the eyes of the user. Um, so one of the things we use is we use Google Earth to take a, a snapshot of your home when you're filling out the application for your home insurance. Many people don't actually know what kind of roof they have, what they don't know some of the technical specs. We actually can answer that for you. And it takes no time, no effort. We'll pre-populate that into your application make it easy for the poor homeowner who's actually trying to think of all these things, interpret it, and then just make it, make the decision and process so much easier. The, the, another good example is we might bring 25 insurance carriers to the quoting process with a particular customer. But as the customer asks their first five questions, we can use technology and use data to know which, which carriers just will not fit the bill the rest of the way. And it just becomes smart technology, smart questionnaire that just makes the user experience that much easier. And if we can do things like that, quite frankly, from the benefit of this, of the industry, it makes the pie that much bigger. But from the perspective of the customer, it makes coverage and protection that much more readily available. And boy, could we make a big difference? And I think the industry is on the verge of some of those things, but none of us have the solution all by ourselves. We have to yep. sort of be used to saying graduate school, uh, Bijan, where you and I both went, you got to cooperate to graduate. We have to, we have to work together in this industry to make it successful. Yeah, I, I agree. Um, that I just want to add to uh, perspective here. So if we focus on our customers as an insurance industry, and let's use claim frequency uh, as a measure. Let's assume that our average claim frequency is 10%, just for sake of argument. What that means is that we have 100 customers. We go through all these processes. Maybe we tell them what kind of roof they have using Google Earth. Maybe we use all these third-party data and everything else. And we get to a point that, okay, we have a good product. They buy the product. The reality is that from that point, let's say it's an annual product till the next renewal, we have no contact with them except that 10% that have claimed. So when we talk about claim, uh, customer experience uh, as an insurance industry, we are slowly moving from 
focusing on claims. And as Ed said, or uh, I think Harry said, you know, we want to control claims. We want to reduce claims because that's the actual financial risk for us, which is opposite of what the customer wants when they have a claim. Because, you know, right now with the COVID-19 and BI claims, everyone knows what's happening uh, as an example. So the idea here in terms of customer experience is that we need to think of products and services that we can really offer to our customers using technology, using data that has kind of nothing to do with the product itself, but is around the product. The best example is that you buy car insurance, you have a roadside service. Even roadside service is not used by 100% of your customers. That's one point. The second point here is that insurance product is one product you buy and you don't want to use. You know, you buy a, uh, a wearable uh, watch, the minute you get it, you want to open it, wear it, and, and use it. We talk about other consumer products. You know, when, when you buy a shampoo, you want to use it. When you buy a soap, you want to use it, whatever. Insurance product is one product. You have to understand this. You buy to protect with the intent of never using it. Nobody wants to have an accident. Nobody wants to, God forbid, die. So the concept here, uh, when we talk about how do we move our historical experience, and I agree with all the panelists that we are a bit in the dark ages when it comes to understanding these components, um, we have to understand how our product works and why the person buys our product and what does it mean in terms of consumer buying our product. We're not really selling something that is usable. <laughs> we're, sending a, we're basically selling an option. That, 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 that's, what it, that's what it amounts to. So when we talk about the data, either our data or third-party data, whatever, all that becomes important. This is one of the reasons why in many areas for us, we are trying to focus on building communities first. And then to that point, if you talk about customer experience, so customer experience from the point that they basically buy the product to maybe when they no longer buy our product, that's the experience, everything that happens in between. The company experience is larger than that. When we think of a product, our company experience starts, customer experience is the middle, and after that, we still continue till we do runoff and don't have the product anymore. The issue here is that can we engage the customers by using communities before customer experience, before they even buy the product? Uh, and here we can create, you know, um, I'm, I'm talking about using technology, creating a website or a different, different ways of doing it, communities, whereby uh, we can gather data from the customers. We can help them along the way. Let's say you're a university student. Uh, you have certain needs. Maybe your computer is the only thing that you're concerned with if it's stolen or broken. Then you, uh, you know, you, you, you have a family. The, the risk profile changes. You have your first job risk profile changes. Imagine if there is a website whereby you can go, as there are many websites for many things uh, that, that you do, and does the analysis of potential risks that you have. It's educational website. It's a community where people talk. Uh, there's a blog and, and, and. But the issue here is that in that process, as we identify using the data and everything else, we can develop products and offer quote unquote risk transfer. But that community helps us define what is it that they need. So uh, the point I'm trying to make is that we have to focus on what our customers are. What is the product that we sell? We get caught up on the fact that it's a consumer product. It really isn't. It's not a product that the customer who buys it wants to use, which is a very different way of thinking. And the fact that not every one of our customers has the experience about our services and everything else, because 10%, let's say, is the frequency of our claims. So what other products and services using data that we can add that goes along with what Harris was saying in terms of risk management, in terms of risk control, in terms of reducing your risk, and all the other things that creates more connectivity between us and the customer. One last point about data. To us, data is like gold dust right now. It's everywhere. And uh, the idea is that can be harvested and make gold out of it per se. And I think, uh, I think someone mentioned, we have a lot of data in our companies, tremendous amount of data that we're not even, even, even using. Um, so in our companies, some of the areas that we're in, we have actually used this, used that data to create using technology. And by the way, we don't have to build technology. Other people, as I mentioned, who are very, very good at this. Um, just as an example, I finished with this point, uh, you know, telematics uh, right now, or um, everyone knows what that is, but given the, what we went through last year with COVID, the idea of a telemedicine. We didn't develop the telemedicine concept, but we are using it 
in terms of, let's say, a community that is part of a healthcare system, they have telemedicine. Now we are incorporating telemedicine as part of our product offer. This could be when you had a headache, let's say an H product, even before anything happens, you have consultation using technology. A year ago, two years ago, technology was there, but we weren't using it. The society changed as a result of everyone getting digital, having this kind of a, you know, meetings on Zoom and everything else. Uh, so all of that, we have to keep in mind about how we develop. And lastly, in uh, Lloyd's, we have the platforms in Lloyd's, we have used this to create the very first um, AI-based, algorithm-based um, uh, Lloyd's uh, syndicates. It's a separate syndicate. No people. It's all algorithm. But that was done with the help of um, one of the universities in London that are best at this, plus Google. My point is that we didn't develop that technology. We used what is out there. It's just that we added our data and we were able to do it, the whole thing, at a much better uh, cost base, which is, I think, a big issue for our industry. We have to be very mindful of that. We can improve underwriting, but at the end of the day, we're going to have certain loss ratio as a whole. But all of this should be focused on reducing costs and also increasing the benefit to the customer along the lines that everyone was just discussing. Other thoughts on this, when we consider where uh, social media has taken us and the formation of a variety of groups and communities in the various forms of social media, uh, Ed, how do you see uh, communities and build, building up a, a population of uh, potential customers with common needs uh, as an opportunity to, to bring product uh, that's specific to that community? Um. Well, when you look at communities per se that form online, and they may be communities of people who travel, they're looking for content about traveling or something, and there's a website that supports that. Um, or you're looking at associations, people with a community of interest in terms of their occupation or their employment you've got common characteristics, you've got common needs. And the question has always been, how do you access those people from a company point of view? Or better still, how do you give them access to products and services that they need? And there've always been ways to do it, right? In the analog world, you could do it through associations, let's say. Um, it could be a dog breeder association. It could be a professional association like accountancy. Nowadays, there are digital communities that are doing the same kinds of things. It may be a Facebook forum. It may be some other um, social community on the web, but you can get at more and more of them and you can give them in essence, first access to the education about the product and then literally access to the product itself. So I think it, it has created opportunities to get after more communities that were available and do it in a more efficient way because you're just taking again old concepts give association members with common needs a particular type of coverage we used to do it by paper i mean we do desk drops we do mailings we do phone calls now we can just do a link to a website or post content on that website which then invites the customer into our shop and the shop happens to be online. So there's, there's huge opportunity there. And then the other piece of it is you can, in a sense, um, create even broader up, broader communities. I mean, there are those that are explicitly dedicated to specific interests, but you've also got the opportunity to do, for example, lookalike campaigns. You may not even understand what it is all these people have in common, but if you take your own customer base, and you go out and you can use the right algorithm to find others who look like them across various data elements, you can find people with the same kinds of needs. So again, it, it's a little bit different in that case. You're not bringing a product to that community, you're bringing that community to a product that they need. But either way, there's enormous potential in what the web and all the data there brings. The, the, the real challenge is managing all that unstructured data, I think. But but as a product manager, the, the opportunity is huge. Let's see if I could add, um, I think, Ed, and I think Bijan talked about this a little bit. One of the concepts that I think as an industry we should investigate, and, and a lot of this is happening already, is um, the distribution of the product historically has been through an intermediary to the customer. Uh, 
making the product available in contexts that are different, right? So for example, we've seen uh, Tesla offering insurance as a part of purchasing the car itself. Um, so if you're a small business owner, right, maybe looking for partnerships with payroll providers for workers' compensation or uh, point of sale systems, things like that, where, you know, we think of this, we talked about how we interact with the customer over twice every year because that's the renewal term. Um, but those are interaction forums where they have to interact every day to do business. Making insurance available as a product in those contexts allowed you to be, you know, uh, something of a different product that they can be front and center with services or whatever be it. So I think that's one thought. And what motivated this was um, I'm looking to uh, get, my, get my teenager a phone finally. He's been yelling at me for some time that you know 99% of the population has it and I don't, um, which is probably true. Um, but, but in looking at it, the phone company is selling me Netflix. You know, I think it's, been, it's a recent thing. So as part of my phone subscription, they are adding Netflix on certain packages. Now, they must have found some analysis that prompted it. They also must have a good understanding of me because my phone usage and my patterns and everything is a very strong, you know, sort of insight into what I do, right? And so hence, you know, they think I'm the right candidate for that. So similarly, you know, you could think about maybe, you know, Yelp or, um, you know, OpenTable or any of these kind of forms where business owners are there registering their services and things like that. Uh, there's a ton of data those guys have about the entity and bringing that into and bringing, making insurance available in that form. So maybe, you know, using things like what Rob may have an API.